I'm also going out in the woods and, you know, we train for like this crazy race we didn't talk about yet, Barkley. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Barkley was the, the it is, it is, it is the, the animal of craziness. I mean, it, it's just such a crazy race because you have like 120 miles where you have to run in 60 hours and you have to like run 60% of it off trail on extremely steep like inclines and you climb the equivalent of Mount Everest from sea level to top twice in 60 hours. And you have to, while you're doing this, this the character I was telling you about, Laz, you have to basically uh, find these books he's hidden in the wilderness. So this all happens down in Tennessee, only four and a half hour drive from Cincinnati, four hour drive from Cincinnati in uh, the Frozen Head State Park. And it's, uh, it's like um, really difficult to do the navigating when it's dark, foggy, rainy, and 32 degrees. <laughs> it's really difficult. It's wet. Uh, Laz, yeah, yeah. for the record, is a terrible human being. Uh, yeah. For the record, oh, no, him no. hiding books. <laughs> so as I want to get back into your story, but you do realize what you've just told us, that 120 miles, right? So well, said, it's supposed to be a hundred mile race, but we, but but everyone knows it's really like one hundred and twenty five miles. Like, there's no exact measurements because, in every year, it kind of evolves, and he's always trying to make it slightly tougher. He's a horrible whatever. human being. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, he, he, he's, a hundred, he's a genius. A hundred and twenty five miles in sixty hours. Okay, you know that's two and a half days, right? I'm just making yeah. sure that you yeah, know what I, you're doing. I guess doing it's here. about two and a half days. I'll, yeah, it, it seems like a lifetime. <laughs> It's more like a lifetime. You guys are okay. So get back into Laz. I just want to establish for the record that I think he's a horrible human. Being. <laughs> he, he 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 creates the venues for for ordinary people to do really extraordinary things. So it's called Barkley. Barkley. Yeah, Barkley. it's named after one of his neighbors. Okay. Yeah, he's a good friend. All right. So uh, these books to navigate, it's really tough. Well, yeah, the books he he chooses the books based on his humor of the year. So, like, I mean, they usually have titles like You're Going to Die or Hell is Real or Just Give Up. <laughs> like, he finds these really funny titles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, and then you got to go, what you got to do is you got to follow his directions, which are really cryptic. And, I mean, each, like, I mean, book has, like, a paragraph you got to follow. So, you got to go, like, all right, go northeast up the re-entrance, find the uh, beech tree that seems bigger than all the others, and the book will be underneath the roots of that beech tree. <laughs> There's like 20 beech trees. <laughs> so it, sometimes it can be a little challenging, especially if you're a virgin, like it's your first year doing it. And last year was my first year running this Barkley race. It's Definitely mo the most difficult race on the planet, no doubt about it. It's it's uh, no one has finished it in the last five years, and since 1984, only 15 people have finished the race. So it's it, but it it the thing is, it's just right on the cusp of what is possible for a human being to do. Maybe you know. So it's like it's possible, and we and it's like you 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 think it's possible, but it's, it's like you have to have everything come together like a, just perfectly in a crescendo to make it actually ever come true. It would be like the scene of Indiana Jones where he's literally roaring underneath the door and a door slams, you know, that, that trap door slams shut. And that's the way it will be the next time someone finishes Barkley. So no one ever quits. It's just how far do you get within the 60 hours? Oh, no, a lot of people quit. They, they, get, they get scared <laughs> and they get tired they get cold they get sick a lot of people quit most people quit but yet yeah, there are a lot of people that they just get timed out so what happened to you last year uh, well it was kind of uh i guess i quit uh oh i did quit so it's kind of like a a, a quit um so what did you learn then what'd you what, learn for this what year? happened was i was halfway through loop number two loop no number one was went went well 
Um, loop number two, I we we couldn't find a book. It was like the the sixth book. We we six or seven book. Uh, it was raining, pure dark. Uh, our visibility was down to like maybe like seven or eight feet. I mean, it was just raining really hard, 32 degrees. And uh, Courtney uh, Dualter, who's just uh, an amazing runner in herself. Uh, you took number two to her in a race. I did. She's she is she has been the number one female ultra runner of the year numerous years and and she's by far the most famous ultra runner in america maybe david goggins and her might be pretty like he might have her slightly on that one but she's amongst the ultra running world she is like the she is definitely like um just an amazing person and 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 what you see from her on social media is exactly where she is in person like i mean she's it's not like you get two different characters. Like she is That's as sincere as she can be yeah. when no one's watching and it's somebody that, yeah. I mean, she is like just a really good, good, amazing person. But yeah, she beat me at, at Biggs in 2020. I was number two with her. And um, yeah, we've been on the same team together for the 24 hour race. Anytime I'm on the team with Courtney, it's like, it's like definitely an amazing experience. She's, she's just a, a very supportive person it's not like she's com- extremely competitive but with their extremely competitive nature it's not like she's trying to tear down the person next to her she it's like she she makes other people greater as well isn't it good when you have a team event and there's that person who shows up and you're like oh we got a shot yeah yeah because of uh, them we got a shot me wh- them mm. yeah i mean uh we we've had pretty uh, amazing teams in America, like uh, in terms of world championships in the running category for many years. So you guys quit because you couldn't find a book. Hard. I know. It's, it sounds pathetic. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, we we just like we were getting really cold, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was just like to when you. It's not like there's some beacon on you, and it's not like any sort of no one's coming to rescue you out there. So, I mean, anything happens, you have to be, you're responsible for yourself. Like, no one knows where you are exactly. I mean, they could, like, figure out, like, based on, like, the last book's uh, page torn, but that that's, could take, like, 10 hours to figure out where the heck roughly someone is and then narrow it down from there. So, yeah, we, we ended up, like, saying, like, okay, we were out there for quite a while, like, maybe a half hour, an hour, like, I think an hour searching for that book and it, we just were unable to find it in our, in a time was passing and we're just getting, when you slow down and it's 32 degrees, I mean, it's really interesting when you're running in the rain. Like I, I like when it rains, like I like when it's cold and it rains, but when it's cold and it rains and you're out there for a couple hours and you got like your equipment on, it's, that's cool. Then you're out there for like five or six hours. Okay. And then, go out there for like 10 hours and see how you feel. Like it's like, you might as well just be swimming in the lake. That's, you know, 32 degrees because it feels about the same if you're, if you're, you know, yeah. So I learned a lot from that experience. And I also felt like in that circumstance, I wasn't just responsible for myself. It was like Courtney and I, and you know, so if we were both pretty cold, I knew I was cold and I knew she was wearing slightly less than I was. So I knew she must be at least as cold as me and if not more cold. So, I mean, getting from there to getting out, if anything happened to either one of us, like then that would be, I didn't want her to be responsible for me. And also it would be hard for me to, to get both of us out if, if something happened to her. So, and I mean, you're dealing with a lot of like crazy exposure i mean you got like we got creeks we're crossing you got rocks are slippery i mean there's a lot of obstacles out there so that day i said okay this sparkly thing is new to me and like this i'm i'm gonna like take these lessons i'm a you know we're gonna hike it back to camp which was not easy (laughs) we had to climb up a, a a steep like uh Jeez, uh, steep hillside. I, th- I think they call it meat grinder. I'm not sure if that's the name of that one, but um, yeah, I mean, it it took us like all three or four hours to get back. It seemed, and uh, 
yeah, I mean, I didn't regret that because it was a learning experience. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like Fight Club out there. We don't actually say if we're, if we're doing the race again or this or that. But, yeah, I'm going to do that race again. I'm not telling you when, <laughs> but I'm going to do that race again. And uh, I, I hope to take those lessons. And, you know, it's kind of great to fail at something, too. You know, because failing makes you better if you don't give up. So how do we know when to quit? How do we know? So the, for me, it depends on the situation, of course. But, like, definitely with running, the only time I would quit is if I actually had, like, something that I was potentially injuring that would impact me long term. Yeah, that's the only time I'll quit. Or, and, you know, in the case of Barkley, you know, it felt like, you know, we were putting ourselves in a, in a circumstance that they, it could be bad. Like, you know, I mean, those, those situations could turn bad. They fast. could, and they do yeah. for people. Yeah, if you, if you know what you're doing, you know when it could be yeah. okay. And so the only reason why it's okay to quit is if you learn from it and you come back again. Bam. 